Why do people run for cover when they hear the word budget? Maybe it's because they love to work on theirs so much. Therefore, today we will be discussing how to develop a spending plan. Don't tell anyone, but what we're really going to do is develop a budget. There's no reason to panic. Developing a spending plan should be easy, simple, and reflect your personal goals. It needs to be easy and simple or you will never complete it or stick to it. It must reflect your personal goals or will fail to fulfill its purpose, making sure your money's doing for you what you want to have it do. That's the key to successful money management. So, we begin the process by establishing goals, short, medium, and long-term goals. What goals do you have for one year or less from now, for two years from now, and where do you want to be in five years or more? Get a piece of paper and write down some financial goals for each of these time periods. Or better yet, go to our website, familycreditmanagement.org, where you can download a copy of our spending plan and start figuring it out. When you have those goals, I want you to take a copy of the goals. You establish pictures of them, something that symbolizes what your goals mean. Put them in your wallet, your purse, and refer to them often. Even put a copy in the refrigerator or at home. Read these over frequently. Whatever your goals were, a new car, a vacation, your kid's education, you take a picture of that that reminds you of these goals and put it right there. After you establish some of these goals, a large part of developing a spending plan involves changing some bad habits into good ones. We must learn to do some things differently. And you can't change where your money is going unless you know where it's going to begin with. So, we next need to stop, think, then you can save. If you are in a checkout line, stop. Do you really need what you're holding? If so, think. Is that item more important than your goals? Or is there a cheaper way to satisfy that need? Or is it really just a need? Or is it just a want? Will you still want it in a week or three months from now? If the answer is no, save. Put it back, leave the store. You can get some excellent help and resources and tools to help you do this at stopthinksave.org. Next step is to calculate our income and expenses as they are today. For your income, you can use your pay stubs or tax returns. Just make sure you only list income you can rely on, not overtime, not bonuses. We've all seen how rapidly these can evaporate when the economy gets bad. I suggest you track your expenditures for a month or two by setting up categories. Look at some examples on page six of the spending plan. To determine where your money's going, at the end of every month, tally each category. Then compare it to the next month and start looking for a pattern. I noticed within two weeks of starting my tracking, I was spending about $80 on lunch alone. That's $160 per month just on lunches. You may see a different trend in your spending, but the key here is to identify those areas of spending where you can make changes. In addition to listing and tracking your expenses, list your debt. Include current balances, monthly payments on bank and store credit cards, total these to see how much you owe and what the minimum payments are. If you're carrying debt in this area, one of your goals should be elimination of this debt within five years or less. And make sure you don't add to these cards if you're running the balance month to month. The first step to eliminate this debt is, as I said, stop using revolving credit. Unless your spending plan includes the monthly payoff of cards. Remember, you can't borrow your way out of debt. The quickest way to eliminate the debt is to apply the most disposable cash you have to the highest interest debt first, then to the next highest interest rate. Finally, calculate your total monthly income, subtract from it total monthly expenses, which includes revolving debt payments, and see what's left. If your expenses are more than your income, it's time to make some changes. Go back to your expenses and look where the money's going. Ask yourself, What's in there could I, I absolutely do without? What are my real needs and what are really wants? Basically, there are three choices here. You can increase your income, decrease your expenses, or a combination of both. Can you take on a part-time job temporarily? If you want some really good ideas, download a copy of our 100 Small Ways to Save Big at familycreditmanagement.org. Look under More Resources, Educational Booklets. If your income is greater than your expenses, you are heading in the right direction. How can you now make that extra money work for you? Eliminate debt if you're carrying some, and be sure to start an emergency savings plan. 
Remember, those goals you set up in the beginning of this, now you can start planning how to accomplish those. Whether you find yourself in positive or negative territory here, you can receive additional help from a certified counselor. Just call us at 800-994-DEBT. That's 3328. Or to request the free educational materials we talked about today, once again, just call that number. Taking that first and biggest step is difficult for more people. Sitting down and putting all this information on paper to analyze where you are coming up and what the goals are for your future. I encourage all of you, start today. You can do it, but you have to take the first step.